Good morning. Here are yet again for another lovely session, the final lovely session of CENG 4412 Steel and Concrete Design. I'm going to finish up the class with an uh, introduction to concrete slab design. And so uh, this course is a survey course. We go over the basics of steel and concrete design. And I want to uh, finish by just going over some basic, basic theory of uh, reinforced concrete uh, slab design. So let's look at reinforced concrete slab design here. Concrete slab design. And we need to review a couple terms first. RC slab design. So slab design is, awful, is, uh, 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 is obviously very important. Uh, nearly all, m most of our buildings that we construct as civil engineers have concrete slabs. Uh, they have concrete foundation slabs, they have concrete floor slabs, they have concrete roof slabs, concrete all over the place. Uh, even when nearly every uh, steel building that we build has some large concrete slabs present. Anyway, um, so uh, we do need to review something from structural analysis in earlier courses that we refer to as one-way versus two-way loading. Now, I'm not going to go into great depth here, but just describe the, different distance, the difference between this. And in this video, I'm not going to go into great depth in the code requirements of slab design. We could spend all day, we could spend weeks talking about that, uh, especially, when get to, especially when you get into more uh, niche or more um, specific things and details like punching shear and things like that. Uh, it can get very complicated very quickly, but I'm just going to cover the very, very basics uh, of concrete slab design. I'm not going to talk about moment distribution and all the other things. There are many other ways. That, I mean, concrete slab design is a very complex subject. And all I'm trying to do is cover the very briefest theory of this here at the end of the semester. Uh, so one-way versus two-way loading. Well, uh, basically this deals with uh, how a slab distributes load. So if you have a series of beams or girders, so you ha say we have beams or girders around the perimeter of the square. And then we had something like this. So one way loading, the load would simply go to the uh, perhaps the, uh, to the right or the left. This would be one-way loading here. One-way loading. And two-way loading. Two-way loading, things are uh, uh, basically divided up under tribut uh, trapezoidal tributary areas or in this case, triangular, because it's a square, and this would be two-way loading. And we've seen this before in terms of how to design beams. This is, this is how we design our, calculate our loads for beams. But what about for the slab itself? What about for the slab itself? So um, how we split up the loading for, um, for one-way versus two-way loading, for the one-way, uh, we design it simply as a one-way slab. As one-way slab. Actually, let me just put this on the other on the other slide. One-way versus two-way slabs. And so, for a one-way slab, if we have our loading like this. And let's say you have, let's say we have major beams here and here. And this is where all of our strength is coming from. And let's say we have two way, so one way slab and a two way slab. And let's say we had major beams along here. Along all the per along all the periphery, on, or along all the perimeter. So 
something like this. Well, I'm going to show the rebar, or maybe the major rebar, in red. Here, this would be your major rebar, or major uh, reinforcement. Here, I'm going to have a major reinforcement going only in one direction. And here, I would have major reinforcement going in both directions. Here, I'd have major reinforcement going in both directions. Now, when I do this, uh, essentially here, so uh, basically here, we don't have to worry about any, well, no, I should mention here, uh, reinforcement will still exist in both directions, but the reinforcing in the other direction will be minimal. Just a little bit of uh, anti-shrinkage or creep uh, reinforcement. Uh, reinforcing in transverse direction will be minimal. Uh, minimal. And for a reasonably square slab, uh, for a reasonably square slab, see the problem with designing, uh, so the, the tricky thing about slabs is we really can't use tributary areas when we're designing slabs. That works for beams, but it doesn't necessarily work for slabs. So instead, for reasonably, uh, for reasonably uh, square slabs, we can make, we're going to make a very simple assumption. And we could get more into this and when this is appropriate and when it's not. But for reasonably, uh, for reasonably square slabs, I'm going to assume uh, each direction carries half the load. The steel in each direction carries half the load. If we do that, then even if that distribution is not ideal, is not correct, we should still have enough capacity in there to carry the total load. So maybe uh, load will seek out resistance if there, as long as there is enough total resistance there, the load can distribute it, uh, can distribute it, or the uh, steel can redistribute the load. Uh, the load. So how do we actually go from? So we know now that we know what a one-way and a two-way slab are. Uh, how do we actually calculate this? How do we design these things? Well. What if I were to tell you a slab is nothing more than a very wide beam? A slab is nothing more than a very wide beam. Than a very wide beam. So uh, yes, again, I should mention again that uh, I, I do want to repeatedly be uh, uh, caution y'all. Uh, for this class, we're going to cover, we, we can assume this, but in real world design, you do need to actually dig into the code and see all of the uh, details that I'm sort of waving, hand waving away and glossing over here. I'm just trying to teach you the very basic theory here. But again, uh, in principle, a slab is nothing more than a very wide beam. And so how we usually handle this is, when designing a concrete slab, when designing or analyzing a concrete slab, A concrete slab, we usually uh, analyze it as a series of one foot wide beams. So for example, on a one-way slab, On a one-way slab, let's say you had steel with a certain spacing. Rebars of a certain diameter and a certain spacing. What you would do is you would calculate, basically calculate, uh, uh, for, an for analysis anyway, you calculate uh, the average reinforcing steel yeah. per foot of length. the average area of reinforcing steel uh, 
called Per Photo Blend. Uh, per foot of length, uh, and then, then um, design it as a beam with that uh, capacity, or that much steel, or analyze as a beam with that much steel. Design as a beam with that much steel. So, for example, maybe I can look at a brief. Uh, maybe I can throw together a very brief example here. And back, I'm going to try math. Well, not right now. Let's see. So here, where are we hiding? All right. So we have this. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to do a simple example to illustrate this. Uh, calculate or uh, consider what kind of beam uh, finding the capacity of a one-way slab. This is more of a theoretical model again. Okay, so let's think about this. Uh, let's say I have a slab is let's say five inches thick Uh, five inches thick with number nine rebar uh, positioned 1.5 inches uh, from the bottom bottom face with a spacing of six inches C to C center to center. Okay, so what I have here is basically a slab, or let's make this, uh, yeah, that, that'll work. Uh, let, 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 yeah, hmm. Let's make it fun, five inches. No, six inches works. I want something I can do the math easily. So the, w the way this actually looks is like this. I have a big slab that would continue on, uh, you know what, maybe I'll draw it like that. I have a big slab with pieces of rebar uh, positioned every six inches. The thickness of this would be five inches. And then I have number nine rebar, and it would be positioned maybe at the center, or in this case at the bottom, because I guess we we're designing it for a simply supported or something like that condition. And I would have rebar positioned along here, six inches center to center. Six inches, six inches, six inches. Okay. So six inches, six inches, six inches. And let's say I were to look at a uh, one foot section of this. If these things are positioned uh, six inches center to center, I want to I want to find the average amount of steel in one foot. So this would be uh, one and a half inches. I'm, I'm going to be lazy and say it's one and a half inches from the center to the. Uh, from the center to the bottom face. Okay, so uh, the average, I wanna find the average area of steel per foot. And this is gonna be my AS, basically. And since these are positioned six inches center to center, well, basically I have two bars per foot. Uh, no, two bars per foot because they're six inches center to center. They're six inches center to center. So, um, and if you you could work through the geometry to ca geometry to calculate this for any spacing. So uh, it's going to be two bars per foot here, times an area of one inch square. This is why I chose the uh, number nine bars. Uh, makes doing uh, examples easy. Uh, one inch square per bar. So basically this comes to two inches, two square inches of steel uh, per foot of slab. Now you would likely, it'd be very rare to use a number nine bar for a slab, that'd be quite ridiculous, but uh, anyway, it makes the calculations easy for a simple example problem. Uh, two inches of steel per foot of slab. So how are we gonna then analyze this? When we design this, we are then gonna analyze this as a beam 
a reduced beam here, an interesting beam, that has a width of one foot, a depth of five inches, and an area of steel equal to, and then this would be, I guess, uh, that would be uh, 3.5 inches here. And the area of steel would be two inches squared. And that's it. And then we just analyze it as a beam. And basically the way we would then handle this is, uh, w what do we check? Well, we check the, um, find the load on a one foot wide strip of slab. On a one foot wide strip of slab, and calculate the bending moment capacity. That's it. Of course, I'm glossing over some of the code checks and other things, but at the basic level, this is what we're doing. Calculate bending moment, shear, etc. Then for two-way slabs, two-way slabs are very similar. except you, ca you calculate the allowable load on each direction or the, fact the allowable factored load on each direction. Load in each direction and then simply add them. Then simply add them. And that, fundamentally, is the very basic theory of slab design. You turn it into a series of beams, you transform it into a series of one foot wide beams, you calculate the capacity of those beams, and that's your allowable PSF, essentially. Uh, all it is is transforming a, um, a area load into uh, foot wide strips, and then calculate your capacity therein. All right, that'll do it for an introduction to, uh, beam for, uh, to slab design, uh, and as always, uh, thank you.